Hello everyone, it's Marcel Gagné here. In my previous video, I showed you how you could take your Minecraft Pocket Edition, which you run on an Android tablet, and connect it to an external server. In particular, here at home, I run a Linux server where I have um, a Minecraft server so that my son can connect to it and I can connect to it and we can all play in the same world. And, uh, and of course, he can also tell his friends where the server is and they can connect to it and they can play in our world. Now, the place you're going to want to go and visit um, to be able to install this thing is a place called pocketmine.net. As you can see here, P-O-C-K-E-T-M-I-N-E.net. Oh, and by the way, I will link in the uh, comment section below. I will tell you uh, how to get to the previous video so that you can see what I'm talking about in terms of connecting to an external server. Now, the PocketMind server has a server software for the Pocket uh, for Minecraft Pocket Edition, which means you can actually run your own server. That means you can have your own worlds. You can have uh, you can control who gets to connect to it, how many people get to connect to it. You can do things like give players objects, uh, uh, give them privileges so that they can do things like teleport themselves. You can install plugins. You can do all sorts of cool things. And this is really, really, really neat. And you can decide who gets to go on your server. You can do whitelists, uh, make sure that only your friends and family get on there. It's really, really cool. Um, now, there are multiple builds that you can get on here. Um, alpha, beta build. The beta build is probably your best choice if you want something that's relatively stable. I happen to like the development build. And the reason for that is my seven-year-old always wants the latest and greatest features. And the only way to make sure that he gets the things that he complains about that aren't there is to make sure that I've got the latest. So if you touch that development build, uh, you'll see that there are instructions here on what it is you're supposed to do. And there's also a little details link that you can click and it tells you what the changes are that have happened in that particular build. Now, I happen to uh, go in there on a fairly regular basis and update it again because my seven-year-old wants the latest and greatest features. So let's jump over to my SSH session on my remote server and I'll show you how this is done. All right. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a folder called whatever it is you want to call it, actually. I'm going to call this one my PM, as in my uh, pocket mine server. And we're going to jump into that server. And um, I've already got this in my queue here, so I won't type the whole thing out. But the command that you saw on that download page uh, tells you what it is that you need to execute to make this happen. And I'm going to do that right now. Now, while it's doing that, I could sing you a song or, oops, I guess you won't need to hear my song because that happened pretty quickly. All right, dot start dot sh to get the magic happening. You won't believe how fast this happens, really. Language, pick whatever language you speak. We're going to do English here. Uh, do you accept the license? Yes, it's a beautiful license. I accept it. Do you want to skip the setup wizard? No, I'm going to accept the setup wizard because it's going to take me through all sorts of interesting little questions here that are important. Give a name to your server. All right, I'm going to make something up here. Um, the dark library. Hey, that sounds really kind of spooky. Uh, server port. Now you can have multiple ports here. Um, I like the idea of, you, you, you should probably take the default port, but you might want to run multiple servers. So maybe you'll run one on 19132, 19133, 19134. I actually do that so that we can connect to different versions of uh, the Minecraft server. So let's accept that. And server RAM, we need at least 256. It's not going to work. I'm going to give it 512 here. Um, default game mode, uh, let's take survival, maximum number of online players, it's set for 20, oh, let's make it 10, why? Just so we can change it. Uh, enable spawn protection. This is so when you spawn inside the game, do you want to allow people to be able to change things to, uh, to start digging exactly where you spawn? Uh, by default, it makes sure, I think that it's 10 blocks away that you have to start digging or you have to start doing things. But I'm going to say, no, I don't want to enable spawn protection, just, just to be trouble. Uh, OP player's name, uh, that can be your name or, you know, your game name or whatever. I'm just going to use Marcel. Do you want to enable the whitelist? That's to make sure that only the right people connect. Right now, I'll just leave it at no. Uh, do you want to disable query? I'll leave that at no. Uh, do you want to enable Archon uh, for remote connection passwords and so forth? For the moment, I'll just leave that alone. We can talk about that later. And now it's telling me what the external server IP is so that you can connect the Minecraft server. Now, just so you know, after I'm done this video, I'm going to get rid of the server. This is actually uh, just a server that I built online quickly. In a, um, and it won't exist after this, so you can try and connect to it, but it won't actually be there. So I'm just warning you now. Anyway, that is the external IP, and we're good there. And PocketMind will now start. 
Drum roll, please. See, I can't even sing you a song here. This is how fast this all happens. And now it's already set up. It's already running. And believe it or not, it already works. And I'm going to show you that that's actually the case. Let's go back to my Minecraft Pocket Edition here. And I'm going to say play. And you might remember from the video that I click edit and then I take external. Yes, you can have more than one external server. So let's call the server name Dark Library. I don't know, does that sound spooky to you? It sounds spooky to me. Well, maybe not. All right. And uh, let's see, what's the server address here? The server address that we saw in the video was, 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 was uh, 96, 96 dot 126 dot 105 dot 177. And remember, this thing will not exist when you go looking for it. So there's no point in connecting to it. I'm just telling you now, okay? Just so you don't get all frustrated and everything. All right, add server. There it is, the dark library. So let's try, shall we? Dark library, building terrain, generating world. Drum roll, please. Ha ha! There we are. We are in, ooh, and I've already got interesting things that I can start mining for right here. But there's my new world. It's already there. It's already ready. Um, and... Um, if I wanted to, assuming, of course, I was going to keep this particular server running, um, I could invite people and we could all play on it together. So that's it. That's all there is to this thing. You can run your own server. You should do it. It's fun. It's cool. And, uh, you know, if you've got a seven-year-old who loves Minecraft and what seven-year-old doesn't, he will love you for it or she will love you for it. It's going to be awesome. Anyway, um, later on, maybe I'll talk about, you know, what else you can do with a server in terms of, you know, operator commands and running things and so forth. But for now, um, why don't you go out and do that and have yourself some fun, okay? All right? Uh, I think I'll go out there, you know, and, and, and start chopping down trees or something. Have fun, people. Talk to you later.